Our scripture passage today is from 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. The end of all things is near, therefore be serious and discipline yourselves for the sake of your prayers. Above all, maintain constant love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. Whoever speaks must do so as one speaking the very words of God. Whoever serves must do so with the strength that God supplies, so that God may be glorified in all things through Jesus Christ. To him belong the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Our second reading is from Luke chapter 19, verses 11 through 13, and it's the parable of the ten pounds. As they were listening to this, he went on to tell a parable, because he was near Jerusalem and because they supposed that the kingdom of God was to appear immediately. So he said, a nobleman went to a distant country to get royal power for himself and then return. He summoned ten of his slaves and gave them ten pounds and said to them, do business with these until I come back. This is the word of God for the people of God. And will you pray with me this morning? Gracious and Heavenly Father, we've come to hear you speak, to hear your message for us today. And so, Lord, I ask that the words that I speak no longer be my own, but that the words that I speak are your words, your words for your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, living generously, we're actually going to conclude our short two-week series on living generously, but I have to let you know that, that next week we begin a new series, and I'm really excited about it. We're starting a new series called Storyteller, uh, which will dig into the parables of Jesus Christ, just to some of them, just to see what they could tell us maybe just a little below the surface. So I, I hope you're looking forward to that just as much as I am looking forward to sharing it. Well, last week we looked at the parable of the talents to see what it could tell us about living our lives generously. We saw how three workers were given a significant amount of money and that the first two were celebrated for how they handled their gift while the third was punished. You see, the first two were, were faithful with the gift that was given, but the third was not. The first two took risks and used their gifts to produce more. They doubled the amount that was given by the master. The third buried his money so that he wouldn't lose it. He didn't take a risk. He didn't use his gift. This one buried it, hid it away so that no one else could get to it. He remained safe and comfortable. That's not what God desires for us. Last week I ended with a quote from Oswald Chambers as he said this, God does not call us to be successful. He calls us to be faithful. Yes, the first two doubled their money, but I don't think that this is the main point. It was the fact that they actually used their gift. That they were active, that they took risks where God was calling them. That is the real point. We need to understand that, that being like the third person in this story is not a good thing. We shouldn't bury our talents and bury our gifts because when we do, we send the signal to the world around us that we don't want to change. We are saying that we like things just the way they are, but that's not what God wants. God wants us to be faithful and active and risk-taking. So last week, we talked about what we've been given the gifts and the talents and the resources that we've been given by God was the focus of that message. But now we have to turn our attention to what we give, to how we engage in God's mission. I recently, I recently purchased a t-shirt that I love. On the front, it simply says this, Dear Naps, I'm sorry I hated you as a kid. Sign me. Many of this by your laughter. Many of you could probably relate to this. You know, kindergarten. It was time to go to your little cubby and pull out your little rolled up rug and unroll it so that you could lay down and take a nap. 
Oh, if we could go back to those days. I hated that time. Do you know how much more I could do if I didn't lose that 30 minutes of something as useless as sleep? When I was a kid, I didn't stop. It seemed like I was busy all the time. Now, many of you with kids, and especially with young ones, probably know that they just don't stop until it's nap time and they crash. But you see, nowadays, I find that if I slow down, if I relax, that I will get very sleepy. And a nap sounds really good. But if I stay active and I keep on the move, I don't get that way. And I guess our passage from Luke, verse 13, tells us what we need to do in order to not get tired. And it says this, Calling ten of his servants, he gave them ten pounds, ten minas, and said to them, Engage in business until I come. You see, we are all called to engage in business until Christ returns. We are to be busy working for God until he returns. You know that I've recently come back from a work trip where I stayed extremely busy, and Daniel knows what I'm talking about. You just stay busy all the time. There's always something going on. There's always another project that comes up. There's always something that that you have to be pulled from your game, your card game from to go out and help unload a truck or do something else. My daughter stayed busy too, helping me tear off a roof, uh, peeling shingles and nails out of that. Most days we would have loved to have taken a nap mid-afternoon. But we stayed busy. We stayed on the move. And so we never really got tired, of course, until about bedtime when we all just fell asleep right away. So we're called to stay busy, to be active. But how else do we engage? Well, if we look at our passage from 1 Peter verse 10, we see that we are supposed to use our spiritual gifts those specific gifts that God gives to each and every one of us. We're each given different gifts that, we're, that we are able to use for the glory of God. And my gifts are not your gifts. And your gifts are not my gifts. The world would probably be a pretty boring place if we all had the same gifts. We need diversity. We can't all be the hands of Jesus If so, we wouldn't get anywhere because nobody would be the feet of Jesus. In fact, we'd bump into things because no one would be the eyes of Jesus. It takes all of us, every single one of us, using our individual gifts to make this work. I don't want to use certain gifts that aren't mine. Like, take for example, I don't have the gift of hospitality, but I know people who do. I don't have, say, the gift of teaching, but I know people who do. Why would I waste time trying to do something that is clearly in the wheelhouse of someone else? It just doesn't make sense, and that's what I want for you, too. Use your gifts not anyone else's gifts. And finally, in this generous living, we need to give all of our gifts to God. Whether it's using our spiritual gifts or giving the first fruits of our labor, they need to be given joyfully to the glory of God. I mean, we hear Jesus talking so much throughout Scripture about money and about giving We find passages throughout the Bible that speaks to tithing 10%. In fact, we find a passage in Malachi where God is asking to be tested in that. And I remember Jesus in his temptations as he turned and he told Satan, he said, you should not put the Lord your God to the test. But here in Malachi, we find that instance where God says, no, Test me in this. 
This is where I want to be tested. Malachi 3 verse 10 says this, Bring the full tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. Test God in this. Strive to give. Strive to tithe. Strive to increase just a little as you witness to God's power in your life. And see what God can do. Wait and watch for the windows of heaven to be opened up and blessing after blessing is poured out, is lavished upon you. You know, as we talk about giving, giving is done in so many different ways. Weekly or monthly offerings, in person, mailed in, electronically deposited, especially for those who are taking longer vacations. But there are other ways. Estate planning is a wonderful way to bless your local congregation. You could bequest a tenth of your estate to the church. Now, I've got to say this because we have been blessed over the years by several who have given substantial gifts to the church through their estates. This building has been blessed and is being blessed by those gifts. This organ is being blessed by those gifts. Our scholarship recipients are being blessed by gifts. These are saints who have taken the word of God seriously and wanted to give their first fruits to make sure that the gospel message is heard for years and years to come. And so, we are given gifts, not to hide and to bury, but to use. We are told to engage in business, God's business, until He returns. And so here, as a recap, are those three ways that we can engage, three ways that we are called to engage. And that's one, stay busy, take risks, remain active in all that you do within the church and within this community as you reach out to touch other lives. Two, use your spiritual gifts. All those gifts that are given to you, use those gifts. Don't try to find ones that aren't yours. Use your gifts and use them to the glory of God. And then finally, offer your gifts back. Offer your gifts back to the glory of God, testing Him in this. So the questions I want to leave you with today are this. How is God speaking to you this morning? What is God asking you to do? Are you being asked to increase your giving? Maybe plan to add this congregation to your estate. Or maybe, just maybe, God is asking you to get up and get busy and offer your gifts financially and spiritually back to this congregation, to this community, to this world. Will you pray with me? Generous, God. You lavish gifts upon us. You give us spiritual gifts. You give us gifts that we can use for your glory. Lord, you've spoken to us. We've heard your words. We've heard your message. We've heard you call us to action. Now, Lord, we ask that you would give us the strength, give us the power. Give us the courage to take risks, to use our gifts, and to give back generously to you. Help us, Lord. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.